Hey guys. Hi folks. Hello everyone. Hi. Hello. Uh, welcome back. Welcome for the first time. If you're here for the first time, uh, Maker B Podcast. I'm B. I make stuff. I haven't been here for like three months. So I got a lot to show you today. A lot of finished objects. It is like, I don't know, 30 degrees here. It's not 30 degrees. It's like 25, which is a lot for me. Uh, and I'm unfortunately having a bit of a bad chronic pain day. I was feeling real grumpy by myself, real down on the world, can't leave the house. I'm like, I just want to go to the lake, have a good time. I'm going to film a podcast and that'll make me happy. And, you know, it's always a good time filming a podcast. So we're going to do it. Uh, if you're new here, we do things opposite because I like the grand finale of showing you all the things I've finished. So we're going to start with the least interesting stuff, which is what I bought. And then what I'm working on which is pretty interesting. Uh, and then the finished objects. Yeah. And uh, let's get into it. Why the hell not, hey? Why the heck not? Why the heck not? Uh, so first up, I bought, I was just in Vancouver seeing um, family on my birthday. I'm a cancer. Uh, and I bought myself this nurture yarn. I'm using it in a whip right now, so you'll see it later again. But it's the color... Oh, I can't find it. Front row. It says coal, which I assume to be cobalt. It's a cobalt blue. Uh, 20, color 29. I unfortunately don't think I'd recommend this yarn, just because I have had to undo the knots in it so many times. Like, even sometimes the knots are less than five meters apart in the yarn. So even sometimes on the same row, I have to undo the knot. But the color is so nice. Everyone keeps talking about the color over and over again. It's beautiful. Um, and I like it because there's one thick thing of cotton and one thin thing of cotton. But yeah, I was really sad. I was sad that I, I don't love it. Uh, but it's a beautiful packaging and it's a beautiful color, but unfortunately it's just not for me. I'm not gonna buy it again because of all the knots. Another cotton yarn that I picked up, I don't know if anyone else notices this, but I thought that they're like kind of, so I was vegan for three years, about two years ago. And, I don't know, a year ago, I've been vegetarian for two years, year and a half. That's math. Ah, we only need to do time math. That's okay. Um, but I used to think there was no good vegan options for yarn. Like they just didn't exist. And so now I'm finding that there's a lot of really good cotton yarns, especially that I'm seeing. Like I'd never seen this before. It's by Mono. Um, it's called Sammy, which means happy in Quechua, by the way. The tag says. Um, beautiful pink, right? And incredibly soft. It's going to pill like no one's business, but that's okay. Um, the color we got going on is 7879. So yeah, got some good cotton because, you know, summer. Um, I'm thinking about making a rib lace raglan, raglan with this one just because it is so, the pink is so me. Like it's so, I I like pink. I don't know if you can tell. And I'm, I'm kind of into pink. I like pink. Uh, but it's so girly that I don't think that a girly pattern would feel good in it. So of course we gotta take our gender non-conforming icon James and Watts pattern to make me feel better about my hot pink yarn that I have. So I'll hopefully take one of their patterns and um, be able to feel good in this hot pink. Cause I love the color, but I just couldn't do like a I don't know. I can't even. I'm like, what's girly? I'm like, there's some really pretty lace that I was looking at um, shirts that I want to make, but they're a little too pink, you know? So, replace Raglan will kind of neutralize it, I think, a little bit. But that's what I'm going to make with this. Oh, I have a fourth one. But the other thing is that I have maybe too much yarn for the replace Raglan. I don't know. But the color on me, come on. 
I was born for hot pink. I was actually born for red, but hot pink's close second. Um, and it's nice and soft, so that'll become something eventually soon. Uh, and then the other things that I picked up, uh, one of my old local yarn stores in Vancouver, when I used to live in Vancouver, um, I like what they have, and they seem to, they used to be like a lot of like really grumpy kind of middle-aged women. You know, you walk into a yarn store and you're like, okay, you guys have been doing this forever and you have opinions about everything. All right, I'm good. I used to stop, I used to stop going because I was super uncomfortable in there because everyone had opinions and they were like really judgmental. And then I walked in when I was on vacation this time and there was two young people who looked pretty cool to me uh, and were really nice working. So I walked in, I was like, dang, okay, better vibes, amazing vibes. I don't know where they found you two, but they're pretty good, pretty cool. So anyways, they had a sale on pom-pom magazines. They were half off, so I bought two. I bought the uh, ooh, Spring 2020, and this one is the Winter 2021. Uh, this one, I believe, is the one that's edited by Ocean Rose. There, yes, this is the one edited by Ocean, Ocean Rose, I believe. I love them. Is it? I'm, I think I'm lying to you. Editors, no, I lied. It's not them. Art Direction and Styling by Ocean Rose, but... Anyways, it's just beautiful. It's a beautiful thing to look at, and I like the patterns in here. I think they're quite lovely. Jacqueline Seaslick has a little chat in here. Oh, there's a nice lacy pattern in here as well that I might make. Oh, interesting. Maybe I might about the replace pattern. You're watching me discover so much in real time. Thanks for being here, guys. <laughs> so I got this one. I think it's beautiful. Uh, and I just love the... Um, I believe Lydia, uh, what's what's her last name? Yeah, Lydia, Lydia Gluck, uh, what Lydia makes, I believe, is on Instagram. This has some really beautiful art direction, to be honest. I just know that I am the target audience for Pom Pom. Like, I am, like, I'm tailor-made for this magazine. And they get me so good. And that's okay, you know? It's good to know your audience. It's good to know that you are sometimes an audience. Uh, so yeah, that's what I bought. And the last, not the last, okay. Second last thing I picked up, I went to the Fiber Frolic in Tuuk Tuuk, uh a couple weeks ago with my buddy Kate. Oh, a long time ago, actually. But I have roving that I will turn into yarn if I figure out how. But I love, so this pink, and then it fades to blue, and there's little flecks in it of pink in the pink side and blue in the blue side. No, there's pink in the blue side and blue in the pink side. Uh, and I kind of got some bamboo in here. So I'm excited to just be bad at something, do some spinning, be bad at it, see what happens. And if you remember from, I don't know, three podcasts ago, oh no, there's the garbage truck. It's going to be so loud. I'm going to pause this. Give me a sec. Okay, they're gone. Okay, so story about, if you were around at some point, uh, I got this beautiful handmade, not this one, but I got a beautiful handmade drop spindle. And I left it at my mother's house. And she is the Marie Kondo queen. She is the no clutter, no problems. I guess it's her motto in her brain. I don't know. But if something is not in the right place or she doesn't know what it is, trash, immediately trash. Can't leave anything there. She threw out a handmade, hand carved, beautifully balanced drop spindle. And so on my birthday, no, yes, on my birthday, we went to, um, oh no, oh, Gasparo Valley, Gasparo Valley Fibers, which is like my favorite yarn store in the whole province, I think. Um, and we got this, which is the exact same one, not the exact same, because they're all handmade, so they're individuals, but. Uh, I forced her to buy me a new one because she threw out my my old one. So I have this now, uh, and I will become a drop spindle aficionado at some point. Uh, but I already like the way it spins in my hand, so you know it's gonna be good. What if this is what if this is my calling? You know, what's the best thing that could happen? I can become an amazing spinner. It's the the knitter to spinner pipeline. 
is uh, it exists, you know. I don't know if the spinner to knitter pipeline exists though. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's what I have bought recently. Let's talk about what I'm working on. Um, I finished, and I'm so happy with, the first, the left-hand side of my Crux cardigan. Oh, baby, look at that. Hello, gorgeous. It looks really tiny, right? Sure does. But these things block. Look at that. The colors are awesome. It's the Crux cardigan by Amalia. Last name starts with an S. Um, but this is Kindred Red is the company. Um, but yeah, the yarn is sublime. And the purple that I'm using is not from Kindred Red. It's from, it's like just this random mixture of, I don't, I don't know. But the yarn is Kindred Red. The pretty colors are. And the pattern, okay, so I know it looks, I don't look at the ends, don't look at the ends. Look me in the eyes, don't look at the ends. Uh, my face is here, don't look over there. Uh, it looks like a lot of weaving in, it's not that bad. Uh, and it also, when you're working on it, it looks a lot more complex than it actually is. It really is just like weaving in some colors every once in a while, which I quit like quite a lot actually. Um, it's a clever, clever design, very fun, very easy going. So I've got half of the panel on that done, uh, or got the whole panel in the front. So I've got like one eighth of it completed. Uh, and I'll probably won't be working on it too much over the summer because it's hot and this is wool. And I'm, I'll be working mostly on cotton projects because I've got, and, and silk. Because I've got the rib lace, the yarn for the rib lace raglan. And then I've also got yarn for a, um, um, the soul tank by Jackson C. Slick, which is like a beautiful orange silk. So that's my next move. This is probably on the back burner for the next couple little while. And the only other thing that I'm working on right now, because I'm very dedicated to, the, to my, I'm trying to get back into monogamous knitting. I tried the whole multiple projects at once thing, did not work for me. I ended up with like four things half, half done. Um, I'm way too like, squirrel, squirrel. I wonder if it's because I have ADHD, I don't know. Let's ask the Ritalin. Uh, but I'm very, you know, very that with my, uh, it could be my Gemini Mercury, I don't know. It's either the ADHD or the Gemini Mercury, who knows, right? Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> this cotton project is the Sunwake Tea. Uh, it is an episode, it's in the, it's in Pom Pom 20, summer 2019. I'm gonna grab that. Okay, so it was summer 2020 is what this one is. It's the same one as the Arden Tea. Both of them are on my Make 9 for this year. I don't have yarn for the Arden Tea, but I just love. Oh, summer patterns are my absolute favorite. I just think they look so good. But the, I, I also do feel though that these are like, I feel like this pattern should have gotten more love than it got. I think it's so beautiful. Sunwake by Wenke Peterman? Wenke Peterman? I'm really, I'm really apologetic. I'll write down for sure what it is, but just beautiful patterns in this that I've been trying waiting to knit for two years. So I'm really happy that I have this and I can make all the things I want. But yes, this is the, this tea. And this is the, um, the yarn I was talking about that splits constantly. You can see, you can't see. There's so many different places where it just gave up on me and I had to reattach. But overall, this pattern has been a lot of fun. Uh, I just love a lace chart. I will never get over how beautiful lace is. Yeah, they're so special. I just love lace. It's perfect. Okay, so finished objects. I finished a lot of stuff in the last three months. We're gonna go, not fast, but we're not gonna go slow. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna take our time and I'm gonna get comfy. We are gonna work through things relatively fast. Okay. So the very first first thing on the list is this very fun, easy, and cool bandana. My design by Maker B. Hi. Hi B. I hope people don't call me Maker B. Maybe they do. If they do, it's okay. Don't worry. If you do it, it's totally fine. I guess that is what you would call me, right? So by Maker B, by me, 
uh, it's for my best friend's birthday. Today is Monday. Her birthday is on Thursday. And she knows I'm making it for her because I posted on Instagram. So, anyways, but uh, it's only actually the third one I've ever made. And this was a, the DK Cotton that's vintage. I was knitting with it earlier. It was like a ball. It's vintage yarn. It has like, it had a beautiful 80s tag. I accidentally threw it away, but it was like so graphic and so 80s bowling alley. It's kind of what I have in my mind. Uh, but this is quite literally all that was left. I played the most intense game of yarn chicken I've ever played in my life. And I finished this like an hour ago. But yeah. And I, it is big enough for her head because it's big enough for my head and I have the biggest head in the world. Uh, and I'm actually wearing mine right now. Um, this is Silk Linen Decay from Starbath Dyes. The colorway is The Lovers. And I love this colorway. I love it so much. Okay, so that's that one. Um, I also recently finished another Ripple crop top. I gave mine away because the colors weren't for me anymore, but this one is for me. It'll fit great. Colors are great. Color is called Blueberry Lemon Cake uh, by something that I'll write in the comments. But obviously, Ripple Crop Top by Jessie May. Um, great fit on this one. Really cozy for winter layering. Uh, I didn't mean to finish this recently, but we actually, unfortunately, um, I caught COVID on my birthday when we were in BC, so our trip got extended. Despite all of our two years of mask wearing and all of our fantastic vaccines, which made our sickness, you know, not so bad. Thank you for my vaccine. Um, but yeah, so I ended up having more time to work on this than I thought I would, so I finished it. So there you go. All good. Um, also finished these little check socks by Summerly Knits. The yarn is from Puzzle Tree Yarns. One of their mini sets. Um, the, none of the ends in this are sewn in, and I don't think they ever will be. And I'm, I'm okay. I'm at peace with that. Then they'll never be sewn in, and that's okay. That's totally fine. I love how these colors play together. I think they're so fun. Hope your tension's better than mine. <laughs> yeah, I, I, what a fun pattern. I'd recommend this to anybody. And, you know, color work like this takes no time at all. I love them so much. I gotta make another pair of these. What great colors. What what fun. What fun. Okay, talking about fun. This, oh, it's all kinds of crinkled because I pull all this out from my, you know, you know where you just have things stored. This is a wrap skirt. The Heartbreaker Wrap Skirt by Shauna K. Salmon. Looks really cute on. Uh, this is a linen cotton blend. There's a lot of stuff that I would do differently if I was going to make this again. The pattern doesn't have um, short rows, but I would include short rows. I, I included short rows in mine. Um, and it also has two different bind-off methods for the top and the skirt for the matching top. Let me show it to you before I talk about it. Super cute. They look really cute together. Would recommend. Um, so yeah, there's a few things that I wouldn't change anything with the top. I would just make the top regular but the skirt um because of the way you know like how bodies hold fat differently i think the way that my body holds fat is different than the way the designer hold, body probably holds fat like fat as like a you know everyone's got fat on their body you're supposed to have fat so it sits differently on everyone's body right some people hold fat on their legs some people hold it on their arms more some people have it in their bellies or their bum uh so when you get like higher up in size it's hard to design for different ways bodies hold fat. Um, so yeah, I think I would change a few very small things with this. I wouldn't do as many waist decreases. Uh, and yeah, I would have a consistent, I wouldn't do an I-cord bind off, I would do the same single crochet on this side. But if you want to chat about how you want to make yours, I'd be happy to. Send me a message. Send me a message, we'll talk about it. Uh, I tested this, it was a very fun test. And I would recommend it for the summertime for sure. It's super cute. Super cute. <sighs> what do I have left to show you? Yeah, I feel like um, I haven't been so inspired by anything recently. I think I've been... I think uh, my issue is that I take on these test knits that I, uh, for things that I know that I'm going to want to make. 
and then I have a deadline to do them. So I have to do these test knits and then I don't do what I want to make. And then you feel like you're kind of like a slog and your hobby becomes a task and that's no fun. So I've promised myself no more, no matter how good the people are, no matter how cute the design is, no more testing for me for the rest of the year. Um, Cause like, once again, this test was lovely and I also tested for Holly at Disco Stitch. Another great test, awesome. Just like, it's tiring. And so no more tests for me this year and only joy knitting this year for the rest of the year. I'm just like taking what I want to make um, and you know, sticking on my make nine cause but all that stuff brings me joy. So that's good. Um, I don't think any of this, but the little check socks are on my make nine. So that's a good thing. And the Sunwake shirt that I'm making right now is also on my make nine. And this next finished object, the Yvette Pouchette Playmont, no? Super cute little pouch. I think it would fit a skinny yarn perfectly. Um, little pouch that I made to match. I have it inside out because I was just wearing it. Please turn the right side in. Amen. Um, anybody? Catholic math, anybody? <laughs> this, okay. I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a scan so you can see it all. We're starting low. I'm talking in slow motion. This is a thing of beauty, folks. This is the biggest, uh, the biggest anything I've ever undertook in my life. I think it's so cute. I think I love it. Um, I also knit the Love Magic sweater, which I also thought was amazing. Um, so I, and then I knit this pochette to match. Oh, we're stuck on the earrings. Oh dear. Okay, we're good, we're good. <laughs> so yes, uh, this yarn is me dyed yarn. Uh, I am really proud of how consistent it's over six skeins of yarn, okay? And I'm not a good dyer. I'm not good at dyeing yarn. It's a pretty consistent color for six skeins. You'd never know. I'm just uh, I'm a little wizard. I'm a little wizard indeed. Uh, that pattern is going to come out in the fall. It's not out yet. It's just a love magic dress. Uh, but the sweater's out. And I'm not saying that you should knit the sweater and just not cast off the bottom but do the sleeves and then finish it off when the dress pattern comes out. But I might be saying that you should do that because the top is very similar. Just uh, so if you are desperate to knit the sweater, you could buy both patterns. You could buy the sweater and just do the raglan and leave the bottom undone and do the sleeves. And then when the dress comes out, you could finish it off with the rest of the pattern. I'm not, I, I thought that'd be a genius idea for like a, you know, a way to give Holly her money, obviously, because she is a awesome designer and deserves all the money in the world. Um, and also get ahead of the game. You could buy both of them. You know, there's good options. That's all I'm saying. If you really want to make that, you could, you could start it early. But it's going to come out, I think, in August. Okay, and the very last thing I have to show you, because I am hurting and I have to stop doing anything because it hurts. I hate hurting, but I hurt. Is this bar cat? I'm going to write the actual word down. Um, pull over, slip over. The cutest. Look how cute that is. Isn't that nice? It's in a really sweet alpaca llama blend. But oh my god, isn't that nice? I did that myself. I made that myself. Um, such a fun pattern. It was so easy to read. Uh, the fit is great. And this is the, um, I really liked doing that pattern because when I was in Montreal with Zoe, we were in this yarn store and they had samples of patterns in all different sizes. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. And so I was like, oh my God, this isn't my size. I tried it on and I was like, I love this. And so I made one. It's so cool how that works, right? You can just make samples of different sizes and people can discover how nice things are on their bodies. What a world we live in. So I hope uh, if you made it this far, you got some knitting done. I hope uh, you're not too mad how short this was, I'm sorry. But I had to get something done, you know? I was, I was putting it off and putting it off, so now we're here, we did it. Had a good time. I hope you're not sweating too hard wherever you are, or if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, I hope you're not freezing cold. I hope it's such a nice temperature outside for everyone. I hope everyone has a 
nice temperature wherever they are. Uh, and thank you so much for watching and all the best to you and yours and you'll see me again soon. Bye-bye.